So you're going to ask a question. Yeah. Okay. And you're just going to respond. And again, what's our phrase? If Tom Cruise did not have a script, he would be a nothing. Right. And we don't have a script. We just wing it. Uh, that's very I'm, appropriate. I know. Me. That's I'm good at winging it. <laughs> All righty. Ready. Again, cool things are happening during Raptor Rhapsody here at Cumberland Gap National Historical Park. Your park. Oh, my park. Woof. I am with Eileen Wicker from Raptor uh, Rehab Center, Raptor Rehabilitation Center of Kentucky, of Kentucky, located up near Louisville, in Louisville. Yes. And uh, you have been with us for several days this week, but you have been with us before. Yes, I have. I've been and with you several times. Yeah, and your organization is so cool. How did it come into existence? And in a few moments, we're going to have some other birds coming in with volunteers, and I know volunteers are really the backbone of uh, uh, the Raptor Rehab Center. So go for it. Hey, well, we couldn't do this without volunteers. Volunteers are what keep us going. We rescue about 300 birds a year, and what got us started, I don't know, sometimes I think we're crazy because we just <laughs> seem to have got sucked in, and either you have a passion for these birds or you don't, and we all have the passions of these birds. Uh, this one is my heart and soul. Yeah. It has a great resemblance to my husband with the bald Woo! head. And um, so he's, he's really got my heart. But we, we just do fine with the way we work. Turkey vulture. Yes. And turkey vultures and the black vultures get bad raps sometimes. And you know, this is nature's garbage man. This is That's one right. of the most important birds in our environment because they have special digestive enzymes and they can eat any kind of a disease and they don't get sick. So they go around and they clean up the dead animals that are laying there rotting. Right. They find their food with their sense of smell and they're just really, really beneficial to us. So they're, they're a much needed bird on our planet. And he's actually a very handsome bird. When you look at the head, no feathers. And uh, Eileen, you want to explain to us why uh, the, uh, the vultures have no feathers? Okay, the vultures have no feathers because they stick their head up into the cavity of dead, dead animals. So if they had feathers on their head, they would get blood, gunk, and all kinds of matter on their head. It would stick to the feathers. They wouldn't have any way of cleaning it off. And they would get pretty nasty pretty quick. By having a bare head, it simply dries up, flakes off, and they actually have a very long neck. So when that neck straight, straightens out and then crinkles back down, all of that stuff comes off of them, keeps their head clean. So they're, they're really very efficient birds. And this one is 18 years old, by the way, so he's getting to be an old man in both years. So how long have you had him then? We've had him since he was six weeks old. All right, and how was he brought to you? He was brought to us by Kentucky Fish and Wildlife because right. he was kidnapped when he was a baby. Ah. Vulture babies are adorable, but you know, right. they don't make good pets. It's against the law to have them. And um, most people don't have roadkill in their refrigerator. Right. And that's what these birds like. Oof. And as you really look at all of these animals, you have the raptors. We know that wild David Stokes over there has uh, has snakes, turtles. But like you just mentioned, a lot of these animals are not meant to be in captivity. No. Their home is in the wild. And recently we've heard a lot of news reports about people who have had monkeys in captivity. All of a the sudden they've started attacking people. You mentioned, you know, it's against the law. These guys are meant to live in the wild. They are meant to live in the wild. Plus it's a federal offense if you have one. Uh, there's a $5,000 fine, five years in a federal prison, and it's just not good for the bird. And it's not good for you. It, it's really not a good pet. Now at the rehab center too, we know that some of the birds that you have are going to spend the rest of their lives with you. But you have a treat for people today? later on this afternoon? Oh yes, this afternoon we're going to be releasing six American kestrels, three males and three females. Nice. They all came into our center this spring as babies, uh, too young to care for themselves. We put them in tanks where they could learn to catch their own crickets, their own mice. They learned to fly and today will be their first chance to fly free in the wild. Wow. And it's going to be beautiful because kestrels, when they fly free, it's a, it's a display you won't forget. And I know one year you were here, you released a peregrine falcon up at the Overlook. Yes, we did. And then another year, I thought it was six, uh, was it sharp shinned hawks or was that a Might have been red-shouldered hawks. We All get right. in a lot of red-shouldered hawks. All right. 
All right, here's the big question. You take care of these birds when it's time to release them, when they can be released, do you cry like a mother? You know, sometimes I do. Yeah, I hate to say it, but it's like, even though they're not my birds and I don't get personally attached, they're still my babies. Yeah. And it's like, will they be all right? Will they find food? Um, I feel like they, they will, but it's just like any baby bird right. leaving the nest. You know, you've got to let them go. So if I put my finger up next to this guy, what's he going to do? Rip your finger off. I'm not going to do it then, <laughs> because then everybody would just start laughing at me, and nobody ever laughs at and me. And you would bleed. That's right. Thank you, Eileen. We Thank appreciate you. it. Okay. Woo. We can get the next